and the new earth. The earth is changing. We are changing. The big questions that arise. What is the fifth dimension version of earth and how do we transition? There are many theories that contemplate how we make the quantum leap forward into the so-called new earth, leaving behind the old one. This article today should by no means be solid proof for what is to happen, but instead to examine the theories that are already presented to us to help piece together what lies in store for us in the future. Dolores Cannon's work talks much about the split between the old and the new Earths, which is separated by dimensions or density. One is third density based and the other fourth, fifth density based. The vibratory changes align to the difference in our chakra energies, transitioning from a third chakra dominated society to a fourth, fifth chakra society. The third chakra represents the energy center of our solar plexus and expresses how we use personal power to establish individualism, but also to maintain control in our physical surroundings. This gut-based consciousness is more strongly tied to the masculine energy and in doing so it has leaned towards the unbalanced service to self-attitude that has gotten us into some pretty sticky situations. Fourth density consciousness is tied to that of the fourth energy center in our chakra system, that of the heart. Fourth density individuals have woken up to the reality that a being possesses a power and presence beyond that of their physical body, and the person starts pursuing their path towards obtaining higher states of consciousness. At this stage, the person adopting this density state is aware that vibration is the key to enlightenment, and that through an opened heart chakra, they can connect to all things in the universe to see beyond purely the physical constructs of 3D. The heart chakra conforms to the purer energies of love, compassion, harmony and cooperation. Some theories suggest that the fifth density will transition from the heart space consciousness up another notch to align with the fifth chakra. This is the level that we express and can manifest our thoughts instantaneously through the fifth dimension. It is where we can materialize and dematerialize, going from our physical body to our light bodies and vice versa. This is how the Anunnaki were able to change form and how the wild Egyptian stories of these beings changing identities could hold much truth and validity after all. So how do we shift? Again, there are some people that theorize that we will be born into a completely new world, vastly different from our current surroundings. However, I personally think that the shift will be much more subtle than we would like to anticipate. Rather than having a drastic change between a dystopia and a utopia, in contrast, I see the split coming in the form of a duplicated canvas of our current Earth. Just like how a cell divides naturally through mitosis, I see two identical canvases being birthed initially, only for the two worlds to change as we decide which one we want to live in. Living in a parallel world separate from one another would be my understanding of it. As part of our evolution, it is up to us how we want to transform the world, and so we won't just wake up in some magical paradise. Our current reality is presenting us with the catalyst for change, giving us the choice to choose between the old and new Earth, separated by the frequencies of fear and love. The next four years are particularly vital as to what version of Earth we decide to live in. It doesn't matter about your past, but what you are choosing in this now moment moving forward. This is why Dolores Cannon is saying we have the ability to release all karma as long as we drop our fears and let go of any negative attachments we were previously holding onto that was causing us trauma. Trauma is essentially fear stored within the body. These next four years will be really testing us as a global species in how we respond to darkness and low vibrations. When we choose to forgive and move on from all the negativity that our world has been flooded with for thousands of years, only then can we move past our traumas and start rebuilding again from that of a blank canvas. 
This is what our bodies have been preparing for over the last several months and years. To hold higher levels of light and consciousness that will keep us strong and centered when all of the truths of the world are revealed to the masses. We would only seek to repeat the negative cycle of retaliation if we were to fight negative with negative energy. This time we are given the option to move past the corruption through unconditional love or to keep feeding the beast with its own energy. Understand that responding with lower vibrations to anything at all, regardless of the situation at hand, is actually keeping off-planet entities which control our matrix system alive. The more we hold the light, the quicker the waveforms of the planet rise and expand, resulting in a much faster change in alchemy of darker energies. The choice is yours in every now moment. Every negative choice keeps you attached to the old earth and dense energy system. We must learn that we are constantly flicking channels from the old and new earth all the time, depending on our current state. We are essentially training to consistently keep ourselves in the higher timeline by always responding with love. It is really as simple as that. What we are currently experiencing is known as Pluto return in astrology. Pluto is the planet of secrets, but also represents death both physically and symbolically. In our solar system, it is the slowest planet to complete one full cycle around our sun and takes approximately 250 years to do so. Why is astrology so important in all of this? The planets in our solar system are the energetic tools that govern our consciousness to transcend us into higher density beings eventually. The essences in the Bible were astrologers and quoted in this famous text, the wise man follows the star. Pluto, when it comes back round to its native point in its full cycle orbit, creates what we could call breakup shake up time. It reveals secrets so we can alchemize change and learn from what experimentation of the past that did not serve us so we can rectify our mistakes. It is all a learning process in our evolutionary consciousness as a modern human race. As you could probably tell, we are in these breakup times as of now. The last Pluto return occurred when the Declaration of Independence was formed after the war between England and the States around 250 years ago, when Pluto was sitting at 27 degrees of Capricorn. We are currently at 25 degrees of Pluto in Capricorn, meaning we are a couple of degrees away from the biggest truths coming to the surface for all to see. Funnily enough, if you go back 250 years prior to these events, you also had the split up of the Protestants and the Catholics. Everything works in cycles, and it is as if history keeps repeating itself like a constant carousel ride. The ride only stops when you realise you have to jump off. To get off the ride is to not keep yourself from spinning round and around on the wheel of karma. This Pluto return is a big one in establishing who will graduate to the next stage in our evolutionary process and who is choosing to stay ignorant or continue on with learning and experiencing the 3D reality. David Wilcox is suggesting that these dualistic hoops works in 26,000 year increment cycles with us being at the pivotal stage of the processional equinox. He suggests that those left behind would have to wait until the next cycle to complete in order to ascend. Dolores Cannon opposed that this was not the case, and that those choosing not to go on to the higher realms of existence will play out the rest of their karma on their third density planets in their journey of the soul. After the next four years, Pluto moves into Aquarius and stays there for 20 years. This is the rebuilding stage, where it is likely that free energy for all will surface and all debt and homelessness will be abolished. 
we will start to move closer towards group mind thinking and eventually become an all-connected social memory complex that looks out for each other's best interest. This is the new Earth period, where we will reshape and remould the foundations of the future. It is an absolutely amazing opportunity to be alive at this time, to be part of this extraordinary recreation process. Those who look through the eyes of fear at this stage will only experience turbulence in their own minds because they cannot see the bigger picture. Negative always leads to positive. Those choosing the pathway of the heart will be protected on their ascension journey. As the body transitions from carbon to crystalline, this lighter form of matter won't be affected like our old biological systems when the new Earth increases its vibrations. The heartbeat of the planet measured through the Schumann resonance has recently risen as high as 8.5 hertz after being kept at around 7.83 hertz for thousands of years. This has demonstrated that not only is the love expanding on our planet, but time is also speeding up too. Even though we still conform to 24-hour clocks, the actual time when measured to the frequencies of the past is more likely that we experience 16-hour days. The shifting of timelines has already begun. The Pleiades have said that the acceleration via the frequency of the planet started in 1987 and continued up until 2012 in what they call this time frame the Nano. This helped us shift into a parallel reality which matches up perfectly with the Mayan calendar and prophecy. As there wasn't really any physical signs or evidence that we had changed worlds as such, it seemed like nothing had happened. The dawn of a new era was born in 2012, even though we had no clue what was going on. CERN technology that was being harnessed and implemented by the darker forces to create new portals in aid of controlling our universe was flipped on its head when the creator switched the channel on those biatches. The new age was born when this secretive plan suddenly diminished, allowing for the people to eventually gain back control of their planet in the time since the reality change. These darker forces have nowhere to hide now that their technology is useless in relation to their main agenda. They can only attempt to control the population through fear, but they all know deep down they're all screwed, as they're being backed up into a corner with no exit route. The timeline split seems to come down to the choice between organic ascension through doing the work on yourself or taking the shortcut route through that of the transhuman integration. It is a decision in whether to keep your already divine form or to go down the route of becoming a cyborg. The artificial intelligence mainframe would connect you up to a separate consciousness grid that would access your soul or take it from you if you were to choose this reality for yourself. Worlds split by consciousness and perception and splinter off through the biological decisions you undertake. Ascension can only be achieved with pure biology. The 666 number that is referred to as evil is a representative of your carbon-based molecular structure. The density of our atoms carry within them six protons, six electrons and six neutrons. By keeping you in a carbon-based body, you cannot ascend out of the third dimensional plane so other entities can keep feeding off your energy and integrate you into their own consciousness grid of denser matter. The inoculations rolling out currently are the first stages in stopping you from developing crystalline bodies, hence why they call it the Mark of the Beast 666. Those who choose to become cyborgs will be letting go of their divine essence and choosing to get locked into a deeper level of the matrix programming, a matrix within a matrix infiltration system. Those choosing the path of love and light will start their journey from fourth density into fifth density when the education systems are reformed after the collapse of the old socialite ways in the next few years. 
Creativity and spirituality will be at the forefront to develop a soul's growth. There will be a much greater emphasis in helping the human race evolve to its final stage, where we will eventually transition into the fifth dimension when these systems solidify themselves in our new societies. The New Earth Schools will teach you how to become masters of your multidimensional cells that will allow you to eventually switch between physical and non-physical forms. It is said that in order to do this, one must go through five initial stages. The first initiation is the controlling of the ego within the physical body. Additionally, we must learn to not give in to temptation like alcohol consumption or excessive eating and other temptations that may plummet our vibrations. This is really the stage to master the physical body. The second initiation teaches students to control their astral body and will learn how to initiate this one with their physical body so the being is best ready to serve his or her fellow companions. Upon demonstrating this new skill, students will be given the secret of the sea astral light karma. The third initiation stage is all about learning the laws of creative thought, building to manipulative matter. This can only be achieved when the foundation of the physical and astral bodies can be controlled to allow these new psychic facilities to open up on the sub-levels of the mental plane. Forat's secret will be gifted to beings that pass this stage of learning. The fourth initiation is one of immense sacrifice that devotes the individual's attention to a greater capacity for learning of occult wisdom and the studies of the cosmic planes at large. The individual at this stage develops fourth dimensional vision to be able to see further possibilities constraining to time and becomes more attuned with a greater understanding of how sound and color are used to heal as well as create. The secret of polarity and universal sex for all kingdoms are revealed to students after this commitment of study has been acknowledged and thoroughly demonstrated to the ascended masters. The fifth and final initiation consists of mastering the sixth mental subplane and the final secret of the three fire types is gifted to those that have become true masters of themselves. Once all these five stages have been completed, humans would then be allowed into the higher dimensions and can either choose to go on to explore other avenues of creation or decide to stay as fifth dimensional entities in the new earth. The new earth creates itself when we choose to create it. The time is now. The 9D Acturian Council want to remind us that we are not limited to laws, money in the bank, nor our geographical location. It is only when you change your vibration that you change everything. It has never been about a change of scenery, the new earth, but instead a change in you as your internal world reflects how you perceive your outer world. Worlds split by agreements and beliefs. The Pleiades stress that what you are invested in can build millions of worlds and not just one. It all comes down to if you believe you can do this, since everything is just thought and thought is infinite. This is the power we hold in the form of probabilities within quantum mechanics. Set your intentions all the time as this is how you take control of the matrix and recode its information field to manifest the world you want to see. This is a skill that we all need to practice. Focus on what you want rather than what you don't want and this is how we will all shift. The shift between dimensions that separates the old and new earth seems to be a big topic for discussion. How does it occur? And will we know when it happens? Today, I will be exploring not only how the shift may occur, but also the time leading up to the transition and how we can anticipate when we are close. The perspectives I will be sharing today is a mixture between predominantly Melchizedek's teachings alongside some quantum hypnosis data from Dolores Cannon's material. As always, 
Please take what resonates and leave the rest. Thank you. There is some confusion around what dimension we move into. It is actually more probable that we move into the fourth density than the fifth. The Native Americans who shifted en masse say we are moving into the fifth from the fourth density because these tribes count the void as an actual world and so they begin counting their dimensions from that point onwards. This is exactly the same as Malchinek's description of us moving from the third dimension to the fourth. They both equate to the same thing, but the labels are defined differently. Malchidek has kindly helped me in the past by implementing some light codes and downloads into my consciousness for me to share with you. Seraphis Bay has jointly assisted in this process with them both activating the seven seals of Solomon within my body to align me onto the ascension pathway and help me better understand the shift which is to come. Melchizedek describes that we must prepare ourselves for the fourth density as the laws of this dimension change and we must become better equipped to control our state of mind since this new level of reality manifests your thoughts instantly. He described a hall in the Great Pyramid of Egypt which held fourth dimensional energies and acted as an educational room in order to train the mind so that the being encompassed in that space could learn to adapt to this new level of reality. As humans in the 3D, we still hold on to a lot of trauma which shows up in our negative thought patterns. If we were to take that cognitive behavior into this great hall, we could instantly manifest our own nightmares. The fourth dimension itself occupies our dream time and hence why we can experience nightmares as they are subconscious thought frequencies that manifest themselves through our own projections when we go to sleep. Lucid dreaming is a similar skill set of controlling your mind so you can program your reality to the experience you wish to encounter. This is why the people who are going through to the new earth must be accustomed to the higher frequencies, otherwise negative thoughts could sabotage the other beings and the environments around them. Manifestation still occurs in the 3D. It is just that there is a lag in between the time from thought through to fruition in the physical. This is due to the density of light that takes longer to travel through the layers of distortion to reach us before manifesting itself in the third dimension. The frequencies become slower in their wavelength form as a result, hence why the time seems longer in acquiring your desires. As this process isn't instant in the 3D, many humans will choose to reject the spiritual concept of the law of attraction because it does not take on an immediate effect. Melchizedek describes the chaos that takes place before the planet shifts into another dimension. What occurs close to this time of dimensional transition is that geometric fields of the planet severely weaken and become highly erratic by nature. This is the final phase before the big changes take place and this stage can last anywhere from three months to approximately two years. In this time period, civilization starts to break down as the geometric field moves closer towards zero. The consciousness grid of the planet holds our thoughts, feelings and memories. As this field radically distorts, so do we. The extreme, changed, is our psyche makes us unravel as a global civilization and we go completely off the wall as a result. The same thing happened in the fall of Atlantis, where the people went completely crazy as Earth's magnetism moved to zero. The same can be said for some astronauts that initially first went into space, who experienced the zero geomagnetic field for two weeks or more. These individuals had full mental breakdowns. Future astronauts are now given a small appliance or device that they wear on their belt that is able to produce and maintain a stable geomagnetic field around their bodies when in space. Well-being of the individual is also stabilized on both a physical and psychological level as a result of utilizing this tech. The planets in our solar system all play a part in changing our grid, which affects our consciousness. 
This is why planet retrogrades make us feel uneasy as it manipulates the grid to get us to start behaving differently and forces us out of our old stagnant ways. Our moon, which controls the tides, has a prolific effect on our emotions through distorting the geomagnetic field within our Saturn moon matrix system. In astrology, our moon sign represents how we show and express our emotions. Full moons are powerful because the energetic influence is stronger on our electromagnetic fields held within the unified field of our planet. This is evidence in police records in major towns and cities where reports of crimes globally have the largest numbers on record for the day of, before and after a full moon occurs. Those who do not have control of their emotions are more likely to fluctuate in how they respond. These moon energy shifts give an individual the opportunity to utilize more power within their consciousness if harnessed correctly. But alternatively, these energies can have a more detrimental effect on a person's psyche too. It's not just crime either which is affected. Stock markets change and shift drastically as the trading sector is all governed by emotion too. This is why with all the changes we are seeing on our planet right now, everything is breaking down or at least remolding itself within our economy. Those who have worked up their vibration can see past the chaos and aren't affected so much by the external changes which were initially set off by a distortion in our geomagnetic energy grid. Physically, the distortions in the geomagnetic field play havoc with our technologies and also affect nature and other intelligent life forms. Birds use the magnetic grid of the planet to navigate to migratory routes, and since we've had so many distortions in these fields, many of these birds are not migrating to their normal locations anymore. The same goes with the whales and dolphins, who also use magnetic lines as their inner radar system. Those that would have followed the coastline are now being beached, as their navigation systems are being manipulated and distorted, so that many of them end up stranded and washed up inland. Melchizedek also states that there is a shift in the Earth's human resonance before the planet transitions into another dimension. The heartbeat of a planet is usually consistent for thousands of years before it rapidly undergoes a sudden surge in frequency as it moves closer towards a dimensional split. We are seeing this happen right now, as the Earth has transitioned from 7.83 Hz on average to as high as 8.5 Hz more recently. Each of us in our earthly journey holds subconscious memories of the cataclysms and geomagnetic distortions that affected our consciousness in past lives associated with a dimensional shift that occurred in our previous incarnations. For every shift that occurs, there are those that break through to the next dimension upwards and those that get left behind as the old matrix system resets itself. This is on the basis that the planet hasn't already been destroyed or is still salvageable from the damage implemented. There is a version of Atlantis that we all know about that fell and destroyed 80% of the population as the old Earth reset itself. However, there is a version of Atlantis that moved into a higher dimension and currently exists for those that were able to make the shift through their vibrations at that point in time. The purge of humanity is bringing up these past traumas of when we didn't make the shift in the past and is providing us with an opportunity to see if we will respond differently this time through raising our vibrations. Uniting as a social memory complex or going back into survival mode like we did in our previous incarnations is the test everyone is presented with to determine who will make the cut and who won't be going forward into the next dimension. Everything up until now in our earthly existence has been training to hold the higher states of consciousness so that we can move past the geomagnetic energies of the planet and not get sucked back into the lower densities. 
Melchizedek stresses that it is the ET sending us the high-frequency gamma rays of light energy, alongside those who are invested in spiritual development, that are helping the planet to shift through keeping high vibrations on the surface as the world resets itself and transitions in these difficult times. Melchizedek himself incarnated as a Native American who shifted into another dimension with his tribe. He described the actual shift in overlapping dimensions which separate from one another as unexplainable beyond what the mind could comprehend. The Native Americans label this event as the Day of Purification. As we transition into a new grid, the data of the old grid breaks down. Where the new grid cannot take the higher densities of matter, the synthetic materials that we use in our technologies will be dismantled back to their original elemental forms. This is why the malevolent AI timeline will be eradicated in the new dimension, and the transhuman agenda will cease to exist. Melchizedek explains this is why we have no evidence of ancient advanced civilization technology as physical proof because all the synthetic machinery and materials were broken down from past transitions and matrix resets. Aeroplanes that existed on the Earth millions of years ago show no trace of sightings or archaeological discoveries as the materials from these past objects have broken down to their original molecular structures, like how glass would reform back to sand. The best example is the remnants of Atlantis that had to start again from complete scratch. We essentially went backwards as we shifted forwards, as we pushed the reset button on civilization and all of its contributions. It is a possibility that some of our technology could carry over into the fourth dimension, but that would require a special energy field to keep its molecular structure intact when passing through. The end times and apocalyptic narratives boils down to that of the world starting again from a complete blank slate in both realities. However, one will be destructive and the other will not, as they say, reset. Just like how Atlantis was broken down, are we seeing the old Earth just repeat this cycle once again? This might be what my benevolent reptilian channel, Treb, meant by the Earth going through a perpetual loop See my TREB transcribed channeling for more info. The actual dimensional shift, according to Melchizedek, occurs within a five to six hour time frame. This moves us into a new time space dimension as we pass through the void to enter the fourth dimension for those who are choosing to evolve. The higher dimension starts to show specific changes in color and forms outside of regular 3D human consciousness and spectrum of light as it bleeds through into our current reality when beginning to shift over. This will only be visible by those who match these higher frequencies and will move over into this world. This corresponds greatly with Dolores Cannon's work which describes the immense changes and increases in the upgraded color palette in the new earth. Everything seems more vibrant, and there are even certain forms in this new environment that are not recognizable to us humans at this point. The introduction to new foods and plants, like the self-cooking custard apples, are said to be one example. Trees have also been noted to have changed in some instances, with those embedding the colours of both purple and orange within their trunks. Dolores' work explains that the old earth during the separation phase between dimensions will provoke a cleansing period that the planet will go through in the 3D, and those not choosing to evolve will get stuck with these hardships on the planet, as the others who have increased their vibrations can step into the new dimension and see what is unfolding in the lower one. Gaia in the third dimension will eventually seek to destroy the surface of the planet and its inhabitants as it attempts to reset itself with flash floods and various earthquakes. The temperature of the old earth will get so hot that it will destroy and burn up the plants and make it very hard to breathe. Cracking due to the heat in the ground will lead to toxic gases held within inner earth to also be exposed on the surface and flood the atmosphere. Many will die from this exposure of toxins. 
It is a gas that we cannot sustain within our lungs, and so people will be forced to seek refuge underground to survive. This is how a portion of humans evolved into greys, who became slaves of the reptilians through this negative timeline choice. This is still a grey area for some. Much love. Thanks for watching.